Today, well, last video, I saw I was gonna answer some questions. You guys hit me with a bunch on Instagram. I'm gonna definitely answer all of them this entire video. First question we got by is trust underscore the process cuts. Uh, magic clips are perfect for everything. Oops, you know it, bro. Show how far apart to make guidelines. Well, on my, um, on the barber system, I'm using a mannequin. Hold on. Glad you asked that question because with this fade right here, I showed guidelines. <clears throat> the thing about guidelines is it's not precise for every head. So this is just lines shown in order to help you think about it. The first line is like the trimmer or the clipper line. I use, I use the clipper first and then put the trimmer under it. Next is opening it up. And then after that, we have the one and a half, which you put the guard on, the one guard on and open it. This is the two closed. Then you just blend those out. The beginning and the end, I always use closed, right? Use a zero close use a two closed but the two up here is not even really a line and it's not even really a two because i close it but i'm going up allowing the hair to gradually i don't go with the round of the head i go straight up to make it look straight up hopefully that answers your question boss next the hair mav inco i found out that the normal fading upward technique doesn't work for coarse hair any advice on that um that's not really true fading up and fading down they just they have their they have their strengths and they have their weaknesses right i think the one that's the strongest to me is fading down because you're controlling the lightness the entire time when you fade up right you create guidelines in areas you're not even sure if it needs to be there or not when i have these guidelines right i can make a guideline here but not know that there is like a gap or a dent or something or like a light spot right here right but if i'm gradually taking the hair i'm just like kind of taking a little bit at a time and going down i can see like stuff starts revealing itself i see where i need to work on i see where i need to skip next we got sanchez munez and nine nine if you was to if you was to have a barber shop how would you set it up sink at every station tool cases etc um a sink at every station would be pretty dope um i'd move towards simplicity of course when it comes to the look i like having like the design i like straight lines i like shelves rather than industrial looks i like it to look more like a more like a home than Home Depot, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm a striving barber and I need help taking out guidelines. They always say to take out the lines with what they created it with. And I don't know if everybody understands what that means. If you create a guideline, it's not really, you're not fading. Yeah, you still have to fade that line out. That's a second step. When I have a client, I can't mark green lines on their head. So instead, I create lines with their hair. And after I create those lines, I need to go and fade that out. There are a few techniques that are used to take those lines out, which is using the same exact thing you use to, to create it, but not, of course you don't do it the same exact way because then you just be creating another line. Use the corner of the blade and you attack it. That's yet another thing that the barber system goes into detail about. The corner of the blade, you turn it to the side, the thick, there's the, the teeth teeth on the, the clipper are all even and they're all thin, but on the ends, you'll notice that they're thicker. Turn it to the side, it's like placing an imaginary guard in between where you are and where you wanna go. So if it's a nut, if it's a half and a one, turning it to the side becomes right in between, like a 0.75. Piero Nakavovic, I'm doing, I'm butchering these things. How to make the shape of the cut based on the head shape, bald line and fade height. I'm not quite sure, I really don't know how to answer this question. I'm not quite sure what it means, but I'll try my best. Whatever your jawline is looking like, from your nose down, whatever the shape of that is, I try to mimic it on the top. So like for me, like if you guys noticed, my face got a little chubbier because of medications I'm on. So I no longer had the high boxy shape that I usually did. I curled it up a little bit. I mean, this is not styled right now, but I curled it up a little bit and now it's more round to match my face instead of having this, this strong contrast. Okay, Ben Roach 25, what's your favorite foil shaver to use? Right now, I, I like the Andis Pro Foils. The, the ones I have are pretty dope. S period, class period, barbers. Favorite barber you used to watch before becoming a barber? Easily Vic the Barber. That's the one I used to watch the most. Miguel underscore OT's 58. Best way to gain clientele. Best way, okay. Best way. When you say best, I always you always gotta go to mindset for me. So the first thing you gotta know, like the first thing, first thing you gotta know is that everything is connected to story. Everything in life. So the first story that you need to know is that person's story. 
I think number one rule in gaining clientele or even building any business is nobody cares about you, not one person. So when you look at the client coming into the shop, you gotta understand that clients go to the people who serve or solve their problems best. The barber who has the most clientele or the barber who builds clientele the best are the ones who understand their clients the best. And that is putting on their shoes, knowing their life and all those things. So an example of a barber caring too much about themselves over a client is like you focusing so much on the hairline how sharp it is but the client only cares about the shape of their head but you're trying to take a picture for instagram you haven't spent much time on what they care about with their haircut but you got a sharp line for an instagram picture you understand that clients typically move on a certain street or or if you're in school they go on these certain areas but you're you're not in an area where it's easy for a client to see you, you know you're just not thinking like a client when you think like a client be the client you do things to attract that client jb.clips what is your your end goal tough question because i don't really have an end goal i just have goals and i know that they're ever evolving so i guess i can tell you a few of them um a, a few of my goals are i want to leave a mark of course on this industry i want to leave a mark I want people to i've always wanted to be to help people see their value help people think better be a thought leader and really improve i mean just the way people think about things so from an educational standpoint i do want to help people know how to cut hair of course that's what i like doing teaching them stuff but i also want to help people people learn why they cut hair, learn why they, they do what they do, try to find what they love, try to find their passion. What I love about barbering is the flexibility. I love ownership, the amount and various choices that there are to be you, to express yourself. So I guess if I were to answer, it's too it's too many things and it's too many, too many answers for me to give. I think one of the biggest pulls for me is I want to live life purposefully helping other people without feeling it, you know, without being stressed or feeling like, oh man, I got to go to work. I want to be happy to go to work and I want to make enough streams of income where I don't have to. So I see, I see too many people go to jobs because they need the money. You know what I mean? I want to create enough value so that when you see me or when, when we're in the same space and when I'm talking to you, it's not because I need to pay my bills, but it's because I want to help you. So that's, that's where I, that's where I want to get commission, commission. Commissioner Sam, what age did you start barbering? Uh, 14, 15, I kind of started sophomore year. If you watch my How I Became a Barber video, I started cutting hair in the dorm at my, my boarding high school. So it's about the age right there, 14, 15, I typically say. Can you make a video on your setup for lighting and explain how important it is? I don't really have a setup for lighting. For lighting, I just kind of adapt to wherever my surroundings are, but I can tell you how I adapt. How do you make haircuts really hella crispy? You gotta really uh, put enough olive oil, let the stove heat up enough, and then, then the joints get hella crispy. <laughs> no, I'm playing. How are you gonna make, how do you make haircuts crispy? Okay, so a common misconception I believe young barbers have is, but your crispy lineups are related to how sharp your trimmers are. But nothing gets closer than a blade. So it doesn't really have much to do with how sharp your trimmers are as much percentage wise. I wouldn't say it's, it's that much, but the vast majority of the percentage is due to your understanding to create contrast. So it's a combination of your ability to keep the hair dark and cut hair. So it's not just about the, it's, it's not the amount of hair that you cut, but it's about how well you leave darkness or leave hair and keep it clean at the same time and create that, that uh, contrast. Dan Dalton underscore cuts. Is the money good at the moment? Can you see a good career in barbering? At the very moment, the money has halted. <laughs> there's no money. There's no cutting. Right now, I'd say the money is decent. It's okay. I'm not exactly where I want to be. I'm making anywhere between 800 to 1,000 a week. Next, what are the characteristics of a great, excellent barber? Four things I believe really make a great barber are having great personality, being persistent, consistent. You know, people were killing me for that. Having a great product, really like, you know, cutting hair well. I forgot the fourth one. Dang, I totally forgot the fourth one, but we'll come back, we'll get back to that. Uh, which scissors do you use? I use Mo Motive shears right now. They discontinued. Um, my next shears, I'm trying to get Mitsutani's. Uh, you still use the bevel trimmers. How do you, they stack? against the gold effects um i don't use the bevel trimmers because i had an issue with them um but i think the bevel trimmers personally are the best trimmers i've ever used underscore period joel what do i do while i wait to turn 16 to go to barber school cut hair just cut hair there's no need to wait why are you waiting for school school should not provide you with the permission to cut hair provide you with the license to cut hair for money but if you want to cut hair you'd be doing it you wouldn't be asking me what to do cut hair um xavier underscore busta it's taking me a long time to perfect taking the bottom line out any suggestions as to 
Kawhi. Yes, two things. Uh, hopefully your your trimmers or clippers weren't set weirdly so that you're not, you know, creating more issues for yourself. But taking out lines is your ability to, to understand how to use corner of the blade and the flick out motion. Those two things, if you're putting in lines, you're going to have to use those techniques in order to take them out. Um, Barbara underscore Fidel underscore video on how to make the back of the head lighter when doing a fade. True. Okay, cool. I can do that. It's not a question. Um, Alex J S period one. Can I use Andis clipper oil for wall clippers? Absolutely. Christine Nunez, how are you on life? I'm doing well, bro. Doing good, man. I'm just trying to, you know, right now I'm stuck in the house. So trying my best to provide you guys with some value. And that's what I've been working on. I worked on that course for like th nearly a month. What setup do you recommend for beginners 2020 clippers, trimmers, etc.? If beginners who are trying to be barbers, easily the magic clips. I usually say Slimline Pro LI, just so you can get like a nice, just cost effective, really good clipper. All these do well right out of the box. And shears, I wouldn't worry too much about the shear you have. Go to any local barber supply store, or get like a basic shear, anything for like $40, $50, something real decent and learn how to hold them. Learn how to hold them, how to move them. Then the better you get at holding them, moving them and, and all these different ways of techniques that can be done with a basic shear, then start upgrading that. Uh, why do you enjoy your job so much? Content creator and barber. Um, Because I don't really connect with what I'm doing, but I focus more on why I do what I do. And I constantly question myself and, and refine the why you know, refine why I do what I do. So when I'm posting these videos, I can get tired of posting them. I can be like, dang, all this work, all this editing, all these videos, all this thought, like music, YouTube, just understanding views and marketing and trying to understand all of that. But I never forget that I'm doing these. There's a person out there who's waiting for my next video. There's a person out there who's a little confused about something. There's a person out there that actually their, their lives improve because of the videos that I'm making. So I'm thinking about those people and all the toil and hard work and things that I personally don't even want to do kind of simmer down and the things I like doing and the people I like helping help me continue to do what I'm doing. So short answer, you guys, long answer, everything I just said. Do you recommend for beginners to zero gap their clippers? Why or why not? Don't zero gap your clippers because again, just like with the shears, you want to be able to hold the clipper right. You want to be able to understand symmetry. And there's a whole lot of other things you need to understand before you worry about how sharp the clipper you're using is. Why have a sharp, crooked hairline? You know, it don't really make any sense. Just kind of learn how to get it straight first and then you can work on getting it sharp. And Fade Fanatic top three razor blades. Uh, I don't really have a top three. I just use whatever. I use Dorgos right now. Don't have any. Best setup, mine. Mine's the best setup. Raymond is... CA0. Pros and cons about the Babilis Clipper. Pros, this thing is beautiful. I have the Sophie editions. So they're beautiful. They're black. I think the clicking is a really nice addition. The Anus Masters have the ticks on them, but they don't have, like, you, you can't feel them. The Babilis, you can feel them and it's not too hard and it's not too soft. So, like, you can kind of know your place. I don't really care to. I love that it's a fade blade. Cons, I already think of some cons because it's pretty, it's pretty good clipper. It's a very long clipper. It's like I hold the clipper in my hand and it kind of, it like reaches to my uh goes pretty far like it's not every clipper is not that that far yeah other than that i can't really think of much next we've got what's the biggest difference between a fade blade and a tapered blade other than the shape other than the shape and how thick it is the biggest difference outside of that is nothing <laughs> that's that is the difference that difference brings about other things like the fact that it doesn't cut as close because of how thick it is um the angle is different because of how thick of it and because of how thick, thick it is you have to be more careful with the fade blade because you poke people depending on the one you have yeah but like it's all based on the shape like there's no other difference really do you do eyebrows and what do you think about eyebrow slits and designs i do do eyebrows eyebrow slits are are decent you know which whoever gets them i want to do it opinion on detachables hmm i think detachables have their place i just haven't needed them right now you know there was a point in time where i was like gung-ho on detachables I, i've just been getting tired of detachables lately you got to keep picking up guards keep picking i mean keep picking up blades keep going back to the station more more times than if you had a guard I still stand by that you can probably go through through a haircut faster with a detachable blade, but you don't spend as much time turning. With an adjustable blade, you have different or varying levels, sizes in one guard. With a detachable
detachable blade, you only have one size. So in order to go to a next size, you can't do anything but go change the, the, the blade. And that can get annoying to keep going back to the station, especially if it's further away. So I don't like doing that. So if I need to just get a real clean cut real quick, like a wave cut or bring down the top or do some, any type of bulk work, it's nice to have a detachable, but you know, it's for beginners or if you really want one, but you don't really think you have the money, I wouldn't spend money on it. Any tips for young barbers like myself? I'd say there's too many thinking and watching and not enough doing. Like you're watching this video, you're asking questions, you're reading a lot about what to do on the online and all this conjuring up ideas in your mind. I'd say grade yourself on the amount of times that you cut, not the amount of videos that you watch, not knowing what sneakers 360 Jeezy's wearing, not knowing the next time, you know, 245 is gonna come out with something or not having all the knowledge on the new Andis Clippers. Like all these things don't really, what can you do? You know, what can you do? What do you do? And I think that is the main thing that a beginner barber needs to focus on, action. Watching video is not touching. You actually just cutting hair. And when you cut hair, pay attention to yourself. Do I like what's happening? What am I good at? What do I enjoy? Do I enjoy doing the hairline? Do I enjoy doing the fade? Do I like trimming the top? What am I not as good at? What do I need to focus on? What do I need to, what do I need to improve on? Next time I watch a video, I need to see how they angle the clipper at this part, how to do it. This, you know, ask yourself all these questions while you're cutting hair. And that's what's gonna help you improve. Keep asking why something is happening and answer those questions with action. And um, that's all I got for today. So all that talking, thank you guys for watching today's video. Appreciate you. See you in the next one. I'm gonna be right by you. I'm gonna be right by you. I'm gonna be right by you.